Today we are going to discuss about methods of gaining space in orthodontics. Why do we need space in orthodontics? As we all know that the major reason behind the occurrence of malocclusion that is either be a crowding or spacing or a proclination is said to be deficiency or discrepancy between tooth material and arch length or arch size. So in order to relieve the crowding we need space in the arch. In order to correct the abnormal inclinations of the teeth like retraction of the procline teeth or retroclination of the procline teeth we need space in the dental arch. In order to correct the deep bite we need space in the dental arch. In order to correct the rotated anteriors we need space and in order to uh, align the teeth in the constricted arches we need to expand them to obtain the space. That means in order to correct the alignment of the teeth, in order to correct the inclinations of the teeth we need space in the dental arches. In this lecture we are going to discuss about what are the different methods that are, that are available in orthodontics to obtain the space to carry out or to bring about these results. These are the different methods of obtaining space. To name, they are proximal stripping or slicing, expansion of the dental arches thereby obtaining the space, distalization of the molars, particularly the permanent first molar, protracting the anteriors or flaring the anteriors thereby increasing the arch perimeter and obtaining the space, derotation of the posterior teeth, operating of molars and extraction of few teeth in the dental arches. Let us look into these procedures one by one. The first one is proximal stripping. It is also called as proximal slicing or disking, reproximation or slenderization. Here by means of reducing the thickness of the enamel of the teeth we are obtaining space which will be ultimately utilized to correct the crowding or to correct the proclination of the teeth. Usually proximal stripping is indicated in cases where there is a very mild requirement of arch length or where there is a very mild excess of tooth material. Like as we have discussed in the model analysis, in cases where there is a discrepancy between arch length and tooth size of about 0 to 0.25 mm, sorry 0 to 2.5 mm, we are going to obtain the space to compensate the deficiency of the arch length by reducing the tooth material by 2.5 mm by the process of proximal stripping or slenderization. Before we could sort to the process of proximal stripping, a careful analysis of the study models is required. We should have a careful analysis of the Bolton's tooth size discrepancy. We should clearly do the caries analysis or arch perimeter analysis to find out the amount of tooth material that is excess and we should obtain a intraoral periapical radiographs in order to uh, finalize whether we can effectively obtain the required amount of space by doing proximal stripping or not. If something goes wrong in the analysis of these things, you will land up in wrong decision of proximal stripping. That means a clear indication of the space requirement of minimal space requirement by Bolton's analysis and arch perimeter analysis is a a uh, major diagnostic tool in deciding whether we can achieve a required arch length by proximal stripping and whether this space this which is achieved by proximal stripping is sufficient to correct the malocclusion that is present in that particular individual is uh, indicated okay now when we decide to go for proximal stripping we have advantages on one side and disadvantages on the other side. What are the advantages on one side? If you look into the advantages, 
we don't require any kind of extractions so there will be less psychological trauma to the patient that his or her tooth is lost to, to correct the malocclusion and a more favorable overjet and overbite is achieved that means it has been concluded that in most of the cases or most of the orthodontic cases treated by extraction method there will be some deepening of, of the bite but when we go for proximal stripping rather than extraction we can achieve a more favorable overbite as well as overjet now by means of proximal stripping we are actually flattening the contact points between the teeth when the contact points are flattened the adjacent teeth can be uh, you know adjacent teeth can be held stable against each other and there is no slipping off of the teeth particularly that happens in cases of mandibular anterior teeth so the contact points which are broadened and flattened by means of proximal stripping gives a more stable point for stability of the teeth okay particularly in the lower anterior region that means the teeth will not slip off from their contacts and result in crowding rather they will be stable as the contact points between those teeth are flattened because of proximal stripping so these are the main advantages that we have with proximal stripping now if you look into the disadvantages as i told you we are going to strip the proximal surface of the teeth that means we are going to remove a portion of enamel and sometimes the teeth will land up in sensitivity so whenever the patient tries to take uh, fluids of extreme temperature or foods of extreme temperature he or she might feel sensitivity of the teeth that is subjected to proximal stripping now case of susceptibility will be more in cases where we do proximal stripping because we know that proximal stripping of the sur uh, teeth will create roughened surface which will act as a plaque harboring area or the accumulation of food in that region eventually leading to increased susceptibility of the teeth to carious lesions and one more thing is alteration in tooth morphology by means of proximal stripping we are actually altering the morphology of the teeth particularly when we look into upper anterior teeth when we plan to go for proximal stripping of upper anterior teeth actually we are creating a, a altered morphology of the anterior so you should be very careful that while proximal stripping you should maintain the morphology of the teeth under treatment okay now loss of contact between adjacent teeth and foot impaction sometimes over stripping of the proximal surfaces of the teeth will create a space between the teeth which act as a point of plaque accumulation eventually leading to the sequel that is periodontal destruction and sensitivity and carious lesions of the teeth so these are the different advantages that we can see when we opt for a proximal stripping as a process of space gaining in orthodontics now how is this proximal stripping carried out we can do proximal stripping by using metallic abrasive strips or metallic discs that carries abrasive points on their surface or else we can use long thin tapered burrs to remove the portion of enamel from the proximal surface of the teeth now how much amount of enamel can be removed by proximal stripping the enamel that is removed from the proximal surface of the tooth should be not more than 50% of its thickness okay from each surface either proximal uh, either mesial or distal surfaces surface of a given tooth we can remove maximum 50% of the thickness of the enamel not more than that if you remove more then that portion of enamel you land up in exposure of the dentin and sensitivity sensitivity of the tooth now once you have stripped the proximal surface by using abrasive strips or uh, thin tapered uh, burrs you have to go for a next step called as topical fluoride application this is an important step after the process of proximal stripping or sonorization the application of topical fluoride will reduce the caries susceptibility of the 
to that is subject to proximal stripping okay the next important method of gaining the space in orthodontics is expansion the indications for expansion are in cases where the space requirement is minimum in cases where we have dental cross bites and where the arches are severely constricted in these cases expansion of the dental arches will uh, give lots of space to correct the malocclusion in the patient okay now how this expansion is carried out the expansion can be carried out by using number of appliances that might be removable appliances or fixed appliances the appliances like coffin spring quad helix nite expander or nickel titanium palatal expander schwartz appliance or herax appliance can be used to carry out expansion in order to gain the space this is a coffin spring which is a omega shaped spring embedded in the split acrylic plate same as a jack screw in place of jack screw which we use for expansion we are replacing it with a coffin spring we can also use split acrylic plate with jack screw to carry out expansion of the dental arches to obtain the space this is a nite expander it's a nickel titanium uh, the nickel nickel titanium made uh, expander it will be compressed and kept in the region of palate inserted safely into the stainless steel lingual tubes attached to the molar bands as the nite expander is compressed and kept in the palatal region it will try to come back to its original form thereby exerting a outward thrust on the dental arches and thereby the perimeter of the arch will be increased so the main reason for increase in the arch length by expansion is the increase in the arch perimeter that can be achieved with the expansion appliances this is a quad helix appliance it's a fixed appliance where the appliance is soldered to the bands placed on the molar by appropriate activation of the quad helix the arches can be expanded the details of the expansion procedure the expansion protocol everything will be dealt in in a separate class on expansion in orthodontics at this point in this class pertaining to this lecture we are just mentioning the appliances that are available to expand the dental arches to obtain the space this is a schwarz appliance which has a screw in the midline embedded in the split acrylic plate by activation of the screw we can bring about expansion of the dental arch particularly the schwarz appliance can be used in a mandibular arch this is a hyrax appliance it will be fixed onto the premolar first premolar and first molar teeth in a permanent dentition to cause about expansion of the dental arches thereby obtaining the space and correcting the cross bites it we have one more process of obtaining the space that is distalization usually we will distalize the permanent first molar either maxillary or mandibular to obtain the space particularly when we require minimum space particularly in cases where there is erupting canine and premolar and likely occurrence of crowding in that region so distalization of the molar should be done only in cases where the profile of the patient is very good without any kind of proclination and presence of crowding or likely occurrence of crowding in the region of canine and premolar in those cases we sort to the method of distalizing the permanent molar either in maxilla or mandible to obtain the space okay the distalization is best performed before the eruption of second molar if the second molar is in the oral cavity distal to the first molar then distalization of that per particular first permanent molar will be difficult because of resistance offered by the second molar present distal to it so the process of distalization to obtain space will be effective and successful mainly in cases where the permanent second molar is not yet erupted and particularly it is indicated in cases where there is crowding or occurrence likely occurrence of crowding in the region of premolars and canines provided that the appearance and profile of the patient is 
good and acceptable. Moreover, the process of molar distillation even helps in correction of a class 2 molar relationship, particularly distillation of the maxillary first permanent molar. If the maxillary first permanent molar is distillized in a patient having class 2 molar relationship, even the class 2 molar relationship will be converted into class 1 molar, molar relationship by distillation process and this will be beneficial to the patient. The force required to distillize the molars might be drawn either from extraoral appliances or intraoral appliances. We have a different methods of distillization and we are having different uh, appliances to distillize the molars. The most common appliances which are in use are use of extraoral forces like headgears, Wilson's biometric arch design, modified Nance lingual appliance for unilateral molar distillization, pendulum appliance, lip bumper, use of nitre coil springs, distal jet appliance, Jones jig, K loop appliance, molar distillation with magnets, removable distillation appliance and locar appliance. Of these appliances, pendulum appliances, extra oral forces and nitre coil springs can be most common to use and easy to use appliances. So this is a lip bumper. Here we have a metal component that is sold metal wire that is soldered onto the man, bands that are fixed over the mandibular first permanent molars and anteriorly this uh, um, metal wire, the heavy 19 gauge wire is uh, embedded in a acrylic, you know, acrylic lip bumper. So acrylic pad is fabricated over the anterior portion of the wire component and this is placed between the lower incisors and the, the position of the acrylic pad of the lip bumper is between the mentalist muscle and the lower anterior teeth. So due to the activity of the mentalist muscle, the muscle forces will be transmitted via this lip bumper to the molar and the molar will become distalized and the space will be gained. Pendulum appliance. This is one more appliance which has the springs that are soldered onto the molar bands on one end and another end is embedded in the uh, acrylic coverage over the palate. And by activation of the springs of the appliance, the molars will be distalized. And yet we have another appliance called as distal jet appliance. Here, that either distal jet appliance or pendulum appliance, they take anchorage from the anterior portion of the palate to distalize the molar. And we can also use a fixed appliance with the open coil spring placed between the molar and the rest of the teeth of the arch, thereby distalizing the molar and obtaining the space. And the headgears can also be used to distalize the molar, particularly the occipital pull headgear and the cervical headgear. And the next method of obtaining the space, which we most commonly used in orthodontics is extractions. Usually first premolars are extracted particularly in cases where there is a severe crowding and severe proclination of the anteriors. In cases where the crowding is very minimal and only mild proclination is present, we can go for second premolar extraction or we can go for a combination of upper first premolar or lower second and say lower second premolar or upper second premolar and lower first premolar or upper and lower first premolars depending upon the clinical situation and necessity of the space. Sometimes we can go for extraction of upper premolars only, upper first premolars only and sometimes we have to go for extraction of second molars or sometimes we have to go for extraction of mandibular uh, incisor, this is called a single incisor extraction depending upon the space requirement of the patient and prevailing clinical condition and malocclusion. Operating of molars is one more way of obtaining a space. Actually, this comes under space regaining procedure. As I told you in my previous classes on uh, interceptive orthodontics, whenever there is a premature exfoliation of the deciduous second molar, there will be measle tipping or measle drifting of the permanent first molar. We can upright this measly tipped permanent first molar so that 
the space that has been encroached can be regained and make it made uh, and we can make the space available for the eruption of underlying second premolar not only in cases of deciduous molar missing cases but also in cases where there is unfortunate extraction of the permanent first molar the second molar might tip into this space of missing first permanent molar and when we need to go for replacement of the missing first permanent molar we need to first obtain the space for its replacement thereby we can go for the process of operating of the second permanent molar thereby the space can be made available for eruption of the uh, sorry uh, replacement of the permanent first molar so operating of molars is one of the means of obtaining the space in orthodontics and we can obtain the space also by durotation of the posterior teeth remember when the anterior teeth is rotated and when you need to derotate it you actually need to have a space you actually need to uh, first create the space and then derotate the anterior teeth but in case of posterior teeth derotation of the teeth actually gains the space this is because differences in the buccolingual and mesodistal dimensions between the anterior teeth and posterior teeth when we take the posterior teeth the buccolingual dimension is less and mesodistal dimension is more whereas sorry when we when we look into the morphology of the teeth either anteriors or posteriors their morphology is such, such that when the anteriors are rotated they occupy less space when we want to derotate them we need to create space whereas in posteriors due to their morphology when they are rotated they occupy more space when we need to derotate them actually we will gain space rather than requiring the space so derotation of posterior teeth is one of the means for obtaining the space in orthodontics okay now yet we have one more method of obtaining the space like proclining or flaring of anterior teeth remember this is an important method which is reserved for only those patients where the profile is good or slightly retroclined or retrognathic profile you can't go for proclining the upper or lower anteriors to gain the space when the patient has already proclined teeth or convex profile proclination of the anterior teeth to obtain the space is reserved only to those, those cases which have a normal profile or even slightly retrognathic prof, uh, retrognathic or concave profile as not retrognathic slightly concave profile not convex profile slightly concave profile as in class 2 division 2 cases okay so we can procline the anterior teeth and increase the arch perimeter thereby gaining the space and this space that is gained can be utilized for decrowding the anterior teeth okay so these are different methods of gaining the space in orthodontics but most commonly most commonly we will be using either expansion or extraction or proximal stripping as common methods of obtaining the space for correction of malocclusion in orthodontics Distalization of the molars, operating of the molars are only prescribed in some specific situations only. So the most commonly used methods of gaining space are proximal stripping, extractions of the teeth and expansion. We have dealt with proximal stripping in detail and uh, we will be discussing in detail about the extractions in orthodontics and expansion in orthodontics in our upcoming lectures. Hope you all understood and just make a note of these things which I have told you in my lecture. Thank you.